In this video, we are going to discuss about process synchronization. Two processes are said to be concurrent when they are executed in a way that their execution interval overlaps. Consider two processes P1 and P2. Before the completion of P1, P2 starts its execution. Hence, there is a concurrency. Take another two processes P3 and P4. P4 starts only after the completion of P3. Hence, there is no concurrency. Concurrency can be of two types, apparent concurrency and real concurrency. Apparent concurrency can occur due to pseudo-parallelism as in the case of multiprogramming where interleaved execution happens on a single processor. Real concurrency is due to real parallelism as in the case of multiprocessing where multiple processes execute simultaneously on multiple processors. There are two types of concurrent processes, independent processes and cooperating processes. A process is said to be independent when it cannot affect or be affected by any other process executing in the system. Independent processes run concurrently but without interaction. A cooperating process is one that can affect or be affected by the other processes executing in the system. Cooperating processes run concurrently with some interaction. Interaction among processes can be in the form of process share resources, processes exchange information, or a process must wait for an event in another process known as synchronization. Process synchronization was introduced to solve problems that may arise due to concurrent execution of the process. Let us now discuss about the critical session problem. Problem. A critical session is a part of the program that access shared resources. Assume that we have two processes, process A and process B. X is a global variable that can be accessed by both process A and B. This session of the code that access the global variable X is the critical session for process A and the critical session for process B. Let us assume a sequence of execution. Process A initializes variable X to 0. Process A increments X by 1. Now X becomes 1. Assume that process A has been interrupted and process B starts its execution. Process B initializes variable X to 5. X now becomes 5. Process B increments X by 1. X becomes 6. Process B print the value of X. We will get the output 6. Assume that process B is interrupted and process A resumes. Process A now prints the value of X. We will get the output 6 which is wrong. Process produced an erroneous output because process A and B share the global variable x and they perform interleaved execution. Situations like this where processes access the same data concurrently and the outcome of execution depends on the particular order in which the access takes place is called a race condition. Race condition occurs when multiple processes access and manipulate same resources concurrently and the outcome of the execution depends on the particular order in which the access takes place. To prevent the race condition, a mechanism is needed to synchronize the execution within the critical sessions. The critical session problem refers to the problem of how to ensure when one process is executing in its critical session, no other process is allowed to execute its critical session. Synchronization deals with developing techniques to avoid race conditions. Process synchronization is a task of coordinating the execution of the process to ensure that only one process at a time manipulates the shared data. A solution to critical session problem must satisfy three requirements, mutual exclusion, progress and bounded weighting. Mutual exclusion means no two processes may be simultaneously inside their critical session. If process PI is executing in its critical session, then no other process can be executing in their critical sessions. Assume that we have three cooperating process P1, P2 and P3. Assume that P1 is executing in its critical session. During that time, P2 and P3 are not allowed to execute their critical session. Similarly, when P2 is inside the critical session, P1 and P3 are not allowed to execute the critical session. And also, when P3 is inside the critical session, P1 and P2 are not allowed to execute the critical session. So this is known as mutual exclusion. At one time, only one process is allowed to execute the critical session. Progress means if no process is executing in its critical session and there exists some process that wish to enter their critical session, then only the process not in the remainder session can participate in the decision and this decision cannot be postponed indefinitely. That means no process outside the critical session should block a process from entering its critical session. Take three processes. P1, P2 and P3. Assume that no process is currently executing the critical session. Now assume that P1 and P3 wishes to enter their critical session. P2 is currently executing in their non-critical session or the reminder session. 
among P1 and P3, only one process should be granted permission at a time. Which one should enter the critical session first? This decision should be made between P1 and P3. P2 should not involve in this decision as it is executing in its non-critical session. That means P2 should not block P1 or P3 from entering their critical sessions. Either P1 or P3 should be granted permission to enter its critical session within a finite time. This is known as progress. Third requirement is bounded waiting. A bound must exist on the number of times that other processes are allowed to enter the critical session after a process has made a request to enter its critical session and before that request is granted. That means no process should wait indefinitely for entering the critical session. Assume that P1, P2 and P3 wants to enter the critical session. P1 is granted permission and executes its critical session. On exit, P2 is granted access to execute its critical session. Again, P1 may request access to enter critical session. While P2 exit from the critical session, P1 may be again granted the permission to enter the critical session. P2 may again request the critical session. On P1 leaving the critical session, P2 may be granted permission to access the critical session again. This can go on indefinitely and this leads to a situation where P3 is blocked from entering the critical session indefinitely. Bounded waiting condition should be satisfied in order to prevent such a situation. We consider the same situation with a limit set as 2. P1, P2 and P3 wants to enter the critical session. P1 is granted permission and execute the critical session. When P1 exit, P2 is given permission to execute the critical session. Again, P1 may wants to enter the critical session. When P3 exit, P1 may be again granted permission to execute the critical session. P2 again wants to enter the critical session. While P1 exit, P2 is granted permission. P1 again wishes to enter the critical session. While P2 exit, P1 and P3 is ready to enter the critical session. This time, P1 will not be given permission as it has already entered the critical session twice since P1 has made the request. Hence, P3 gets the chance to enter the critical session. This is how indefinite waiting is prevented by bounded waiting. Let us continue the discussion on solutions to critical session problems in the subsequent videos.